Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. All right. Game Changer Wrestling GCW Out Mud Show Review. Um, this show happened Saturday night in Wyoming. Um, the show started with Ricky Morton. Yes, that Ricky Morton one half of the Rock and Roll Express. GCW gave him a nice little plaque where it celebrates his wrestling in 50, all 50 states. Um, so with this show in Wyoming, he was able to wrestle in all 50 states in his Hall of Fame career. Um, congratulations to Ricky Morton, one half of the Rock and Roll Express. You know, former NWA Tag Team Champion and WWE Hall of Famers. All right, so the show kicked off with that, and then we kicked off the card. First match on the card, we had Gringo Loco and Jordan Oliver. Jordan Oliver came out with a goat. Yep, you heard me right. He came out with a goat. Now, the scene here, Outlaw Mud Show. This was literally in a... You, it looked like your whole rodeo was there because there was a mud floor, dirt floor, had a ring set up in the middle of it. It was like it was on some farm. Um, so it was kind of game changer wrestling I mean, We have the annual backyard wrestling four coming July 4th weekend. Definitely going to check that stuff out. I've already purchased it on Fight TV. Um, but yeah, this match was really good. Uh, Jordan Oliver, he's that kind of. He's the next guy that needs to be in a major promotion. Um, his nickname is Big Breakfast. Um, he's that tall, lanky, skinny guy who's put on muscle. He's like 220-ish right now. I think he's about six foot 220. Um, talented. To speak on the mic, he's been in MLW. Um, he's got a faction there called Injustice. And in other parts of the Indies, he's the leader of a faction called Young, Dumb, and Broke. This, you know, three, four young guys who are just talented as hell. Um, just doing the thing on the indies. Jordan Oliver's been in Game Changer a few shows now. Um, this match ended up giving it three and a half. Jordan Oliver got the pinfall by, got, sorry. Jordan Oliver went by submission over Gringo Loco. Um, I give it three and a half. Next up, we had Dirty Daddy Chris Dickinson, who finally is starting to get out of that big break, but starting to kind of find his way through major promotion. Um, he's been throughout the Indies. He's in, in uh, New Japan Strong, which is the L.A. Dojo. Um, he's also the from Stuff and Rare Water. He's been teamed with Brody Lee there. Um, he went against the veteran, former WWF, you heard me right, former WWF superstar, Two Cold Scorpio. Um, dude, still still doing it, still kicking it. Um, he's had well, it's like a second or third Game Changer Wrestling match this year. Um, this match wasn't great by no means, because obviously... Somebody as old as Too Cold Scorpio um, can still go a little bit, but obviously uh, their daddy, Chris Dickinson, had to kind of guide this match. Um, Dickinson got the uh, pinfall victory. I ended up giving it two and three-quarter star. Um, wasn't too bad. Uh, next match, we had the intergender match. We had Alley Catch versus Jimmy Lloyd. Jimmy. Jimmy fucking Lloyd. Jimmy Lloyd rode out on a donkey. His ass came out on an ass. Um, that was highlighted for me right there. I'm like, oh god, Jimmy Lloyd, you're running a freaking donkey. Um, Jimmy Lloyd is just that rough, tough, you know, no, no box, you know, big burly guy, just you know, ugly as hell. Go out there and just kick your fucking ass, kind of guy. Um, Alley Catch. She's one of them in the, in the Indies. If you really follow in independent wrestling. Um, they don't have a lot of you know women matches. These women have to wrestle guys. Um, there's been quite a number that have done that and got on to NXT. Poor James in NXT. Um, oh god, I can th I can see them, but I can't hardly picture their name. I should write that down. But yes, I mean, Ali Catch is one of those. She she'll get her big break. She'll get the Impact. She'll get the AW. She'll get the WWE. Um, but she is super talented. Um, but Jimmy Lloyd did get the victory on that. I ended up giving it three star. Next up, we had a bull rope match. Can't have a uh, outlaw mud show without a bull rope match. We had Matthew Justice, one third of um, Second Gear Crew, versus one Paul Manders. Manders came in on a horse, which is appropriate. One Paul Manders, uh, the best way to describe him. 
on a mainstream level would be Bradshaw, but a little more country. Um, but yeah, they had this bull run with Matthew. Matthew Justice actually appeared on AEW Dark Elevation. Uh, I think he's been on Dark as well. So he's had a couple matches on Dark from AEW. So he's starting to get noticed a little bit, which is good. And when you, both these guys are just so talented. I would love to see Mander show up in AEW. Um, but yeah, this match was really good. Um, it was a bull run match. So they literally they just had a rope tied each other, just beating them with each other. Um, ended up giving the match three and a half. We the one called Mander's got the victory. A pinfall victory there. Next up, we had Warhorse versus Effie. Whew, what a match this was. Um, honestly, it was a good match. Um, I ended up giving it two and three quarters. Again, not a lot of holds here. Kind of little, you know, into window what kind of match. Effie is kind of Effie. You got to know Effie to love, love, love Effie. Warhorse, independent, former independent wrestling television champion. Uh, very talented guy. Um, wrestles a lot for Warrior Wrestling. Um, he should, hopefully both these guys can get their big break. And Which I love seeing them throughout the different parts of the indies and different companies. Uh, but yeah, if you're getting the victory there. Next up we had Warren Vente and AJ Gray. We had doors. We had chairs. We had barbed wire. We had it all. That's the one one. Interesting fact about Game Changer Wrestling is you'll see a lot of doors. You know, normally it's the six panel doors, the everyday doors you find at Home Depot. Oh no, they bring out the two panel doors once in a while, and then both of are expensive. Uh, but yeah, they had barbed wire, they had doors wrapped in barbed wire, they were doing stuff off the top rope. They came off the top, AJ Gray did, and went through a door set up with barbed wire. Um, but AJ Gary ended up getting to actually getting the victory here. Bloody mess. Um, I ended up giving it three and a quarter. Um, I enjoyed the match actually. These death matches are hardcore style, whatever you want to call this. Sometimes they can be very challenging on a rigging. Um, you're never you're never gonna have a five star classic here. No, you're not having it. You're gonna have that brawl. And when I rate these matches, I watch what we do with the door, what we do with the chair, the barbed wire, etc. How impactful is it? You know, I use those as kind of moves. You know, when they hit someone with a door, that's like a move, you know. And so it's like, did I enjoy that? Is it impactful? Did it make me go, <gasps> whoa? <laughs> Which they have. Um, their last show, I think a couple matches, I gave four to. So, I mean, there's some really good matches here. Um, hopefully, at the beginning of July, I'll have Best of Game Changer 2021 up. Uh, but I definitely just want to do this review up. Uh, next match is sub main. We had Ricky Morton versus um, Alice Kogar. Uh, Kogar is part of a faction called um, 440. It's 44, the letter O, the letter H. So it's 440. A lot of people call it 440H. No, that's not how you say it. It's 440. Uh, Alice Kogar. See him fight Ricky Morton. It's just like the grandpa fighting his grandson almost. Um, not Ricky Morton. I mean, he can still go. I mean, this match was okay. It wasn't anything spectacular. You know, get a 62 year old man, Ricky Morton, uh, one half of the Rock and Roll Express, been around for like ever and a day. Um, I mean, this dude wrestled before Hulk Hogan came out. So, I mean, <laughs> that's how old this guy is. Um, this match was, I give it two and three quarters. Ricky Morton did get the victory. Uh, it was a cute little match. I mean, again, he's in Bristol in all 50 states, got a plot show it now, which is amazing. The fact you've had matches in every single state is just crazy. What a career he's had. Um, doesn't look like he's going to hang it up anytime either. So, then our main event, we had a bunkhouse brawl for the Game Changer Wrestling World Heavyweight title. We had champion Nick Gage versus Mance Warner. Mance, the leader of Second Gear Crew. Nick Gage, Nick, Nick Gage. Um, definitely, if you have not checked out Dark Side of the Ring, check out the Nick Gage show. Holy hell. Um, I was a huge fan of Nick Gage before I watched that. Um, J-Man from the Pulse Family was telling me about those Dark Side of the Ring. I'm like, yeah, I'll check them out one of these days. He's like, dude, you gotta check it. Because he see my game changers, and he's like, dude, you gotta check out Nick Gage's. I'm like, alright. Dude had a real life death match. Um, he literally died for seven minutes. Um, he got cut right here. It's like, holy hell, dude. Um, been in jail. 
turn his life around. He's got a cult following in Game Changer and in the Indies that any promoter, any huge promoter like events, Tony Khan, they would probably give their right arm to have somebody on their roster over as Nick Gage is with the niche crowd of deathmatch wrestling. He comes out and that crowd just, he is, he is probably hotter in deathmatch wrestling than John Cena was at the height of John Cena. But yeah, this match was just insane. Uh, they went all over the arena. They went to the concession stand. Literally, they're wrestling and throwing each other on tables in the concession stand, throwing sodas at each other, chips on the ground, and you caught yeah, Alley Catch walking around. You saw... I think Manders was over there. Effie was over there. You just see these guys just walking around watching, and they just wanted to see it with the crowd. Um, they fought all the arena tables, you know, the whole nine yards. It was a pretty good match. Um, Nick Gage ended up getting the retain, getting the, vic- the pinball victory. Mains Warner, for those of you who don't know who he is, he is a redneck version of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Best way to describe it. Redneck Stone Cold Steve Austin. Beer drinking, just, you know, country, you know, the whole, you know, just a redneck version of Austin, basically. Um... Yeah, Bunkhouse Brawl was a perfect kind of match for these two guys, especially at Outlaw Mud Show. Um, I gave that match three and a quarter. Um, so, so, you know what? I did not average out. Normally, I average out the star rating because, like, um, Hell in the Cell averaged out to, like, three star overall. And I did not average this one out. But, you know, if you've never seen Game Changer Wrestling, go on their YouTube channel. There is a show from last year that's on there free. If you want to check out some of these uh, guys and girls, also go to Hybrid Wrestling on YouTube. Check out that YouTube channel. And then JCW as well, Jersey Championship Wrestling, which is what Game Changer was. So Game Changer started as Jersey Championship Wrestling. Closed, got sold, re- re- kind of redid itself as Game Changer. They're starting to bring back Jersey Championship Wrestling. It's actually going to be uh, it's on their own YouTube page. So you definitely want to check that out. They have a show coming up July 3rd, I believe. Uh, they have several shows on there. They're actually pretty good shows as well. And then Hybrid Wrestling, those guys also from some of the Game Changer. Um, Ricky, Shane Page, or uh, RS Pussy is some of the people calling. He's at G- uh, GCW only, uh, JCW only now. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you are into that kind of wrestling, check it out. Um, yeah, so this, this show averaged about a 3.1 rating overall. Um, so 3.08 round up. So it's not too bad. Um, so star match quality wise, in my opinion, again, wrestling, I would say 90% opinion, 10% fact. In my opinion, this game changer, outlaw mud show, match quality wise is equal to hell in the cell. So... Match quality wise, Game Changer is not that far behind the big boys. Now, storyline and that kind of thing, yeah, they don't really kind of production value. Yeah, no, not quite there. But um, all, all the shows are on Game on Fight TV. Um, definitely check those out. I'm gonna do every review I can here. Again, first of the month, I'm gonna try to do a best of for the first six months of 2021. That include the WrestleMania weekend. Um, their whole book of shows, I think there were 12 shows. It'll include the 24-hour show they had back in January, which the first time I've ever seen a two-hour Iron Man match. Tony Deppin versus Jordan Oliver for two hours. It is on, I believe it is on YouTube. Well, let me go actually go to their YouTube page and see if it's still up. I know it's on Fight. So if you download, get the Fight TV app. Do, 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 and go to search and type in Game Changer. There's GCW. It'll pull up everything they've had this year and even last year. Um, yeah, everything from April, the whole uh, the blood sport thing. Yeah, it was January 29th. It was GCW Fight Forever Wrestling. Um, this show was officially 23 hours and 44 minutes. Um, so definitely, if you get time, check out part of it at least. Uh, but that's going to wrap up the GCW Outlaw Mud Show review. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. Don't just have a great day.
Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader, Sports Channel Wrestling, and your leader in independent wrestling.